Speak Student. The importance of being earnest. Alashma. Everyone wants a little variety in their life. 31 flavors of ice cream, underpants for each day of the week, and something other than tuna casserole for dinner. But isn't there anything to be said for same old, same old? I wear my Thursday underpants all week. Well, in the satire, the importance of being earnest, Oscar Wilde keeps it green by recycling his characters, sort of. Best buds, Jack and Algernon, have a lot in common. They're both rich, they're both in love, and they both make the same lame brain mistakes. Exhibit A. Jack creates a fake brother named Ernest as a handy alibi for weekend benders. Exhibit B. Algernon also pretends to be Ernest so he can meet ladies. Which brings us to Exhibit C. Jack and Algernon's better halves end up thinking they're in love with the same man, Ernest. Um, he better put a ring on it. Okay. Having a little trouble keeping the characters straight? Huh? Yeah, us too. Did Oscar Wilde just copy and paste the same character? Why does he make Jack and Algernon so similar? Maybe it was for comedic effect. Algernon and Jack don't take any bowling balls to the family jewel. <laughs> but they still manage some YouTube-worthy gaffes. Plus, they're both big on talking, which is an excuse for Wilde to whip out his witty one-liner epigrams. Wilde really enjoys a good farce. Jack and Algernon's shenanigans include fighting over pastries, flirting with each other's female relatives, and that whole fake person scam. One Ernest is pushing it, but here we're talking a seriously Ernest happy alternate universe. Or maybe Wilde was trying to say that one of these things is not like the other. Jack and Algernon seem like twin BFFs, but when they argue we see that each is crazy in his own special way. Sure, Jack invented an imaginary sibling to help him escape responsibility, but at least he worries about the future. And while Jack tries to look like a role model, Algernon concentrates on looking sharp and uh, making trouble. I'm whoever you want me to be. Algernon and Jack are foils for each other, and we don't mean the kind you use to cover the lasagna. More like the compare-contrast kind, with less ricotta. Okay, so here's a third perspective. Maybe Wilde cloned his characters to make a statement about the snobby Victorian upper classes. Impudent scoundrel! It's not you, it's them. Names are everything in this play. Ernest is much less attractive when he turns out to be plain old Jack and or Algernon. Well, okay, Algernon's still pretty fancy. And Jack could be Brad Pitt for all Lady Bracknell cares. If he wants to marry Gwendolyn, he'd better scrounge up a family tree to prove his worth. It also helps if you're made of money. Lady Bracknell isn't super thrilled with Algernon's fiancée, Cecily, until she hears that cash cowbell. Dong. No one in this play seems to care too much about personality. It doesn't matter if Jack cuts in line at Disneyland and Algernon finally buys that puppy kicking machine. Money and pedigree will get them what they want. So why did Wilde make Jack and Algernon almost but not quite the same? Is he aiming for our funny bones? Is he a fan of the foil? Or is he picking a fight with British society? We uh, earnestly want to know. Shmup amongst yourselves. Gender pencil.